is sort of a, a pilotic, relevant, collective relevance realization figure for many people. And, and I, one of the videos I was thinking about doing is sort of, uh, kind of like sort of compare Aubrey Marcus and Andrew Tate because they're both out there as sort of, this is, these are two figures with, with some real contrast about who relevance realization um, who would you want to be? Would you want to be more like Aubrey Marcus? Or would you want to be more like um, Andrew Tate? Or would you want to be more like Elon Musk? And for Christians, of course, they want to be like Jesus. Now, it's very interesting that what, what Matthew had to say about Jesus in this video. Think about There's something in my mind at one point uh, regarding Jesus. I, there's a reason I don't talk about Jesus in this Um at one point, I decided something. Uh, I decided I wasn't going to talk about Jesus until I was satisfied with my understanding of what Jesus was really all about. And like, it's part of my development. At one point, I decided. I decided I didn't understand, you know, and then I started just to think differently. And uh, now I understand a lot more things than the. In the Old Testament than I used to. Even, even since I wrote my book, I mean, I, I don't stop. I keep, you know, if, if, if anyone's wondering what I'm doing now, I'm advancing my own uh, understanding. But, you know, of course, there's tension in it because, on one hand, all of these things we have to do in a parallel fashion. We don't stop living in order to understand. Uh, we live while we understand. And it's a, it's a transjective process back and forth where we're trying to live and understand at the same time. Because we do things, we learn. As we learn, we try to do things. And it's, a, it's supposed to be an iterative process. So it's not just all up in here and we plan the whole thing and then we apply. No, we, we play. And play is exactly the right word. Um, Peterson's conversation with that comic is also very interesting. It's another video I want to spend a little bit of time with. Because it's actually a lot to say about that video. But, so, so we play and we iterate, but a big part of this, I'm running out of time for this conversation in 10 minutes, a big part of this is the question of the person that we are doing the collective relevance realization through. And, and let's say someone like Jesus, because let's say you look at Aubrey Marcus and he's this high status man and he, um, you know, he's got, he's got attributes and values that a lot of people esteem, and so that's why they're watching. You look at Elon Musk, or you look at Andrew Tate, or you look at Jordan Peterson, look at these high status guys, or for women, you know, some of these women might look at Kim Kardashian and say, she is what I aspire to become, the Buddha? And now you're really in a very different trap. Jesus? Is Jesus successful? Do you want that kind of life? In many ways, what Jesus says is if you live like I do, you will get treated like I have been. And, and this is something that sort of brings us up short because we think, is that really the way I want to live? In my sermons, I've been talking about nature religion. I, I think part of the reason people are attracted to um, again, to symbolism is, is right now, as modernity recedes, the value of symbolism and the power of symbolism is, is increasing and the desire to understand. But, but understanding itself as in the seed, as in the formula, as in, you know, as, as in the formula and the seed, I'll use this for example, so I think it's a great example, is insufficient because the seed in and of itself has the potential and promise of the field. And what we really want are the fruits of the field. The formula only has power if the formula is employed in building the bridge or building the skyscraper or building the rocket. The power of the formula is not in the formula itself, and in many ways we're focused on these screens, looking for formulas, hoping to find seeds, but the, the point of all of this is doing, and but then the question is, well, what is the form of that doing? And Christianity is a very has a very peculiar way about this because on one hand Jesus both embodies something desirable but also embodies something that we very much don't desire. Um, 
to be persecuted, um, to be thought of as crazy, to be hated, to be mistrusted. These are the things that we that, that we wrestle with when we think about Jesus. Now, to rise with Him and to reign with Him, and, and we see the miracles and, and we think, oh yeah, that, that kind of power, that would be handy, but again, we, we usually think about that kind of power in terms of our own selfish desires and the, and, and the things that we would want out of that. So, in terms of this little, this little corner of the internet, we are very much looking to understand and I really appreciate all of the the little attempts at trying things, you know, Jacob and his audacious dream of a 24-hour channel, and it's something that I think we tasted at Bridge of Meaning Discord, because it was a place that you could go almost any time, day or night, and find interesting conversation, but it was, it was difficult to sustain, and so now what you see are some of the, really some of the, the, the leaders, and um, I'd say upper level people who are deeply interested in British meaning are continuing to pursue it, but now in, in other means and not exactly sure where the goal is, but they know at each point that, oh, this seed produced a plant. That, that's interesting. But this plant in and of itself isn't quite the destination. It's not quite there. There's more there that I'm looking for. And, you know, YouTube's great songs at a time. Part of the message of the gospel in this, and the message of Jesus in this, is that Jesus comes as the Son of God and the Son of Man. And part of that message is that this dispensation, this version of the world, creation 1.0, is insufficient to adequately sustain the potential that Jesus has. And, and it also it also resists it. You see that in the prologue, to the Gospel of John. Um, the, the, the light comes into the world. The darkness and, and the translation of that varies from from version to version. The, var- the, the darkness doesn't understand it. The darkness resists it. That Jesus comes in and he has a capacity that. Let's say that that the that this version of creation is unable to adequately sustain, and so what Jesus brings into being in his resurrection is creation 2.0, and and Jesus' followers begin that route, and they're still children at it. They're still it's still in seed form, and that's why Jesus' statements about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven are in some ways so cryptic because it's present and as Matthew Pajot points out again and again, seed is one of the um, one of the illustrations that Jesus uses repeatedly and often in his parables and, and, and part of what we're doing is even though not everybody in this little corner is a Christian what I see, what we're reaching for, is that that telos, that goal, and, and we have a sense that if we can use words better, we can see it better, and we can apply it in our life better. And there's truth to that, but there's also stubborn and inadequacy. But I think that's what we're reaching out for. So I am, I am out of time, but hopefully this um, continues in the thinking, talking pursuit of the vision a participatory vision that um, you know many individuals are, are jumping into and, and trying to figure out how can I participate because participating isn't just watching. No, it's doing because when you do, you have to make choices. And it's in the making of those choices that we learn and in the making of those choices that we begin to, to realize and discover and produce. Alright, I guess I'm going to land the plane here because I'm